Hello and welcome to the Enrich Learning online classroom. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Aninye Yudaporo and I'm the founder and director of Enrich Learning. I also put together the online school which will be launching on April the 13th, 2020. So today's session is completely free and I'm hosting it for parents and students and it's a session that's all about tips on how to study at home. This session is going to be broken up into two parts. The first part is going to be centered around tips that I've actually put together for parents and students on how to optimize and maximize the potential that everybody has, even if you are studying at home. And the second part of this session is actually going to be teaching you different learning styles and giving you different tips on how to be an effective learner and also learn what type of learning style you have. Parents, it's really good for you to know what type of learning style your child has so that you can create activities that work well for them and help them to retain information which in turn will help them do very well in examinations and just retaining knowledge as knowledge is power. Students, this is a really effective class for you because you really should start to get to grips with what your learning style is and I'm going to go into lots of detail about that today. There will be a presentation like a document that I've put together about the different tips on how to study well at home and all this information will be made accessible to you in our study guide which is 199 if you're super quick you'll be able to purchase it at a discounted price of only 99p using a discount code which will be on our website okay let's get going for our session so i'm going to begin by walking you through advice that I've put together to hopefully make this a really enjoyable experience. Before moving forward, I just wanted to say that I'm also going to use this as an opportunity for you to see the different kind of features I've put in our online classroom so that if you're interested in opting in our sessions, you can see how it all works. Okay, so I've got 10 tips. I'm gonna walk you through them. Tip number one get organized and plan ahead now like i've said already there's an enriched learning home study guide which you can purchase but to begin with i think it's really good for you to plan your own kind of timetable or schedule so that there is a routine and a system put in place for both the parent and the child parents you have to juggle working from home with also teaching your children or at least supporting your children and students it's really important for you to exercise some sort of routine whilst you're studying at home it is not an extended holiday period you should be learning and what you don't want to do is fall into a habit of an everyday lying so that is why a routine is really important my biggest bit of advice, especially for parents, is that if you think you can replicate the 8.30 to 3.30 p.m. kind of schedule that they have at school, think again. It's not going to work. We have to work together to come up with routines and schedules that are flexible, that allow for breaks, that accommodate for the fact that working from home will be a new and unusual experience for the majority of people. I know some people have been homeschooling for a long time, so this is nothing new to them. But for those of you who have chosen to send your child to traditional school, or for those students who go to traditional school, it's really important to recognize that you can't do traditional school at home. But there are loads of different tips that I'm going to elaborate on in this session to kind of help it feel more traditional. So step number two, or tip number two, avoid studying overload you can't do every single subject in one day it's just not possible so 
what I advise parents to do is have a couple of subjects a day, one topic per day that you would like to get covered. Again, we've got a schedule that kind of helps you do that. But if you're doing it on your own, I think it, it's impractical, impractical to think that you'll do French, Spanish, English, maths, geography, history, etc., all in one day. It makes so much more sense for you to work it out like a process so have a process and realize that it's you're building on knowledge every single week as opposed to just trying to learn it all at once step number three or tip number three there are several different ways to study and like i said in the second half of this session today i'm actually going to teach you what those different ways to study are and i'm going to give really good advice on how to maximize the potential um according to each um, st studying style but what I mean by this tip especially is that reading and writing is not the only way that someone can learn something and actually this is a really good opportunity to incorporate less conventional styles of learning into traditional subjects so for example if you are hosting a geography kind of class with your child students if you are attempting to do some geography you can try and draw out the map of the UK um, and try and identify the different regions that we have. Um, that's a really fun way of learning something crucial. Where we live, it's important to kind of know about the different regions um, and the different kind of characters um, and traits and, and important buildings and scenic areas so that's a really cool way of doing things um or experiential learning so you know if you're doing chemistry at home there are some really basic experiments that you can do try mixing some vinegar with some baking soda and see what happens um if you're trying to kind of like work out the difference between gases and solids and liquids you know showing your child that pouring a liquid into a glass you know making it evident that you know oxygen is a, is a gas um um showing them a solid object just kind of visualizing things and making the learning come to life can be really helpful tip number four Home study gives you an opportunity to kind of go beyond conventional subjects. And I think it's really important that we provide young people with holistic education. So this is a chance for your child to develop general knowledge and learn a new skill and or a language. So this is where I think there's a gap in schooling, especially with language learning. This is a chance for your child to learn French, to learn Spanish, to learn Italian, to learn German. If you are not English, it's a chance for them to learn your language. Um, so I would have loved um, an opportunity to like learn written Ibo. My parents are Ibo, although I understand it. Um, it would have been really cool if I was given an opportunity to um, learn how to read and write it properly beyond the kind of basics that I already know. So those those are things that we can we can fill our time with um and will help your child students it will help you though it will be useful okay tip number five and this is very important try and create some study spaces in the house so personally i find it quite difficult to study in my bedroom it's ironic that i'm teaching in my bedroom today but i find it hard to like sit here and write an essay I actually like to work downstairs so that when I come upstairs, I know that I've come here to relax. I've come here to switch off. I've come here to have a break, unwind, watch a movie, talk to my friends. I find it so much more effective kind of creating those boundaries for myself. And parents, this is a really important point for you. If you create a space in the house where your child is watching television, they are also playing the PlayStation. They are also on their mobile phone and they're also studying. They're going to find it difficult to kind of separate those things. You know, we need to kind of start making them realize that from X time to Y time is study time and we are sitting at the desk and we are getting stuff done or we're doing some experiential learning. And after that, then we can do the more fun, creative stuff. Okay, study tip number six make sure you create some sort of support network so even though we're in quarantine doesn't mean that we can't stop 
that we can't communicate with each other. At Enrich Learning, I've actually developed and created a forum that both parents and students can use to bounce ideas off each other, to communicate with each other, to share the challenges that everyone is facing. That's really helpful for me. That way I know what else I can provide to make things easier. Um, to kind of just build a community like community is so important and sharing is caring okay on to the second page of this document so number seven be kind to yourselves parents and students you know we're in quarantine now we have to be around each other 24 7 and that's something that you're not used to if your child goes to conventional school you drop them off at 8 30 9 o'clock you pick them up at 3 3 30 4 p.m sometimes even later so you have them for a couple of hours a day and that has drastically changed to having them 24 7 round the clock seeing them all the time there will be tension tension will arise at some stage and it's really important that we don't let that tension affect our learning so again maybe working in separate spaces in the house might help if you don't want to kind of be working on top of each other um parents there's nothing wrong with incentivizing studying obviously not every single day because i believe that learning should be about enjoying it and 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 understanding that education is a tool um that you can use to access so many incredible things however saying to your son or your daughter or your child look i've i've got a chocolate bar for you if you get 10 out of 10 in the spelling test today or i've bought some haribo or i'm going to give you some extra pocket money everybody needs incentivizing everyone needs that um at work that is done with bonuses and with kids it's done with treats so there is nothing wrong with that as uh, and there's also nothing wrong with not entirely sticking to the schedule sometimes some days will be tough and some days will be easier but as long as it doesn't happen too often that's completely fine okay tip number eight exercise i cannot stress this enough move your bodies just because we're in quarantine doesn't mean that um that you just kind of sit at home and eat lots of junk and don't really move um in the enrich learning home study guide i'll be including a list of links of free youtube family friendly workout videos that i have come across that i think a lot of families will find useful there are loads of kind of fitness gurus and celebrities who are running free fitness classes via Instagram Live. So that's another option for parents, but it's really important that you kind of keep it moving and, and also go outside for a walk. Like the government have said, um, everyone in the same household, you know, keeping distance, of course, can go outside for a walk. Fresh air is really good for the brain. Step number nine, tip number nine, don't forget to rest, parents and students. I actually recommend taking a 20 minute power nap every day. I do that. Uh, I've loved doing it. I think it's great that now that we're at home, I can get an extra snooze in the day. It's really good for the brain. It's actually been proven to improve motor skills and memory. Um, and it can break things up a bit as well, especially with the younger children. They, they may actually get quite worn out, especially if we're adding things like experiential learning or trying new ways of learning at home. OK, last tip number 10. And this is super important in something that I have come across um, in conversation with a lot of parents, and that is, you know, not being able to understand a specific topic. For a lot of parents, you know, what is covalent bonding? What is ionic bonding? If they've not done chemistry before and they've got a child in secondary school who is doing kind of that high level chemistry, for example, you need assistance and sometimes watching a youtube video simply isn't enough sometimes searching it up on google simply isn't enough 
if you need to access an expert, if you need to access a tutor, then do so. At Enrich Learning, we have vowed to offer affordable um, ways of teaching children um, via this online platform that you're seeing me teaching you on now. And um, there are, you know, so many different ways in which you can access um, expertise, N not least even emailing your child's school teacher and saying, look, I don't get this topic. Any chance you can give a call to explain it. Um, people will be willing to help. People are much kinder than everyone thinks. OK, so the next thing I'm going to move on to, so we're now moving on to our second half of the session, is different types of learner. And I'm super excited to teach this because, like, it's been such a long time since I've kind of come across anyone going into a lot of detail um, about it. Uh, and I just really hope that it makes a difference. I don't know if I can, oh, brilliant. I can zoom in on this and I will. If you can't see my face, my apologies. I just want you to be able to see the infographic. Okay, so I am going to kind of focus on what we call the VARC. So visual, auditory, read, write, and kinesthetic learner. Um, I have found that there are so many different types of learner. Uh, in my master's in education, I'm learning about all the different types and I just think it will confuse you all by going into all of that detail. So I'm just primarily focusing on the four big ones that everyone is made aware of. So number one, the visual learner, okay? If you are a visual learner, and actually parents, you might find this useful as well. You may need to kind of work out what type of learner you are. I'm just going to have a swig of water. If you are a visual learner, you like to process information by actually seeing the content. So charts, graphs, images, which can help you kind of understand um, concepts and ideas, graphics, colour. Those things are really useful if you're a visual learner. And if you're trying to kind of process information, for example, if you're reading a textbook, you take the information from the textbook and you make something like a really colorful poster, or you take the information from a textbook and you make a really colorful mind map and you, you add a couple of doodles pictures of things that will actually help you fully understand the concept you draw out diagrams and flow charts those types of things are the things that really help you if you consider yourself a visual learner okay an auditory learner so an auditory learner learns best by simply just listening and i'm quite jealous of the auditory learners because they retain information just by hearing it. And I wish that was the case for me. So podcasts are brilliant. And there are so many educational podcasts. If you would like kind of information on that, then please do get in touch with me via the Enrich Learning website. And I'm happy to kind of give more expansive information on that. You learn a lot from audiobooks. And there's no point if you're an auditory learner, I'm not saying there's no point in reading, but I strongly advise that you listen to the book. There are so many great books out there that you can listen to. Parents, it's really good maybe to put some a book on in the background whilst everyone's kind of doing some work um, to kind of get everyone's creative juices flowing. So auditory learners learn best that way. If you want to try and retain information as an auditory learner, and this is the really interesting bit, it actually makes sense for you to record yourself reading it out and then playing it back to yourself. That I find is always a really useful way for auditory learners to retain information. So there's that as well. Auditory learners also pick up things, learn things from having a conversation. So parents, you know, I know I said earlier, you may get sick of listening to your child or having them around you, but we're in it for the long run. 
set aside some time if you've noticed that your child is an auditory learner to have a conversation about what they've learned that day. That will help them retain that information. Okay, the read write learner. So the read write learner prefers to receive written words and enjoys reading and writing assignments and processes information by writing notes. This is the type of learner that I am. And my advice to anyone that is this learner is that it's actually fairly boring and fairly repetitive, but that is actually what gets us the really good grades. That is actually what helps us to remember things, is writing it out again and again and again, um, maybe in a different style, but writing it out helps us massively. And so I strongly advise that um parents and students if that's your way of learning you you stick to it reading is essential you've got to read there's no shortcut so if you are required to read a book for something you need to read the book uh the only thing i would say is with the read write learner is take time to give yourself or what i mean is give yourself enough time to do things properly so we actually have to follow a very Pro, a process diligently we can't skip out anything there's no shortcuts okay and lastly the kinesthetic learner so the kinesthetic learner learns things through tactile processes so through moving through touching um and prefers to create personal experiences around that thing that they're learning creating and practicing things is really useful and helpful to the kinesthetic learner. So let me give you some tips and advice. Kinesthetic learners I found do really well from learning in different parts of the house. So today learning in their bedroom, tomorrow learning in the living room, perhaps learning in the kitchen, then learning in the dining room, etc. Sitting on the stairs. I find that that, that process of moving around in 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 all my years of teaching helps kinesthetic learners. Also making learning into a game, experiential learning, that's really good for a kinesthetic learner. So, um, you know, I'm trying to think of a science experiment off the top of my head, uh, you know, like a physics -y type of experiment. If you're looking at motion, using things like elastic bands, that can really help. Um, a kinesthetic learner, because it's that process of doing, of stretching, of moving that really helps a child or a student or an adult to kind of get to grips with um, everything and to retain the information. Okay, so that is the session on tips on how to study at home efficiently and effectively. I talked through kind of what the tips actually are and then i've gone on to the four types of learner again all of this information will be made available to you in our home study guide i'm just going to quickly go through the features of the classroom because i think they're pretty cool um so let us begin with having a look at the whiteboard so we've got a whiteboard um and on this whiteboard i'm just going to draw a smiley face um on this whiteboard tutors will be you know like a school will be writing on the whiteboard will be drawing out diagrams if it's physics will be drawing a physics diagram if it's maths we're doing calculations um and so this space is very interactive it's um very inclusive and alive i'm trying to make it really fun for students you know it's not just about sitting down and not engaging so it's a very engaging space um there is youtube integration which is pretty cool um and i am just going to very quickly put together um put together show you how it works so bear with me one moment um in fact this is a pretty useful video i made for parents about um how the video that i'm going to show you is about how the covid19 will affect sixth form students uh, and what you can do to support 
your child and kind of just explain the process. So hopefully it picks it up. Moment. Okay. It's not picking that up. Um, I will link to that in the description box below and there'll be an abridged version of that in the description box here. But I'm just going to show you very quickly. Okay. Um, for some reason. Let's try and show something else. That's not working at the moment. I will try and figure that out in a second. Um, we can do screen sharing. So I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully you can see that screen, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and again, this will be used to kind of share resources with students. Uh, I forgot to mention that the presentation that I showed you guys can also be downloaded and saved. And what we'll be doing at Enriched Learning is actually putting up past paper questions, especially for the older students, and having those downloaded and saved. So the student can actively download and save that to their laptop. I'm just going to end the screen share. Um, See if the YouTube is working. Okay, unfortunately the YouTube is not working at the moment, but um, how it works is that we can actually watch YouTube videos with students in real time, which is super cool and impressive and helpful. Um, there is also a survey and test option. So what we will be doing with students is we will be testing them on the different topics that we're teaching and they can actively, like as the session is going on, take part in the test, which is really, really cool. Um, and I'm hoping that parents will find this useful because they'll be able to see whether their child understands the topic. I'm also hoping the students find it really good fun because this is another, for a lot of students will be another fresh new way of learning that they've not come across before. We've got a question mode. Um, and the reason why I love this question mode is because if someone asks a question, the teacher can choose to have that question blown up so that everyone can see it. So, um, for example, if I wanted to ask, how do you say your name in French as a question? We're now in question mode. And so what I can do is have this question published to the class and so everyone can see who's asked it and what the question is and um, that just helps everyone to follow the class and also if someone's a little bit shy and someone else has done them the favor of asking the question beforehand then there's no need for them to you know put themselves outside of their comfort zone and ask and it also stops the same questions being asked again and again our very last really cool feature is the ability for us to link um, important resources directly to our students to help them stay informed. So I am going to show you exactly how that works. So I'm going to link you all to the Enriched Learning website. And if everyone clicks on the click here button, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but it takes you straight to that website. Um, and that link is up there for the duration of time that the tutor sets it up there for. It just makes everything a little bit easier and a little bit more seamless um, and uh, kind of just, yeah, really shows how powerful technology can be when used effectively. OK, so. I hope that you have found today's session engaging, 
useful, informative. I also hope you enjoyed the little tour that I gave you of the classroom. I just want as many students as possible to be able to access premium teaching, um, but also not overload parents um, and make them feel that they have to do a billion subjects in a day to kind of get anywhere. The whole point of the Enriched Learning Online School is to provide students and parents with a a system that you can opt in and opt out of so it's you know it's not like a continuous process um although if you want it to be then you just continually book sessions and continue to um study with us which of course we would love i would love that so much but it's also just to give you access to a really important new way of learning e-learning electronic learning is the future. I cannot stress that enough. There is no job that you do that has not got some sort of computerization in it. There is no job that has not been, what I like to say, techified. And this period is a good opportunity for you to teach your child, your child how to manipulate that and how to use that effectively and efficiently. So with these sessions, I really, 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 really hope that children learn how to tap into a very important kind of space and a very important skill that can help them optimize and maximize their potential. For more information on all the subjects on offer, please visit our website, which I've linked down below in the description box. And as always, if you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to get in touch. Um, you know, I love hearing from you guys. Any feedback that you have, if you really enjoyed this session, I'm hoping to be able to kind of put a couple more um, free sessions for everyone on general topics that I think will help all parents and students really love learning at home. I hope to see you in our enriched learning classrooms. Bye bye.